Hello, hello. This is Current Events, and this is Real Talk, Real People. I've got a pretty good one for us. Um, This one uh, is deep. I like to always bring meaningful, deep content, and I think this is a really good one. Because this is one that I think everyone can relate to, um, young or old. And um, this one is called... Or we are going to discuss the concept of millennial guilt. Millennial guilt. What is millennial guilt? My understanding through uh, my personal experience and talking to others, other millennials like myself, um, I've come up with the concept or the answer that millennial guilt is the feeling of guilt millennials have for still being attached to their parents financially. That is what I believe millennial guilt is. And you think about it, you know, as such, they feel that they are less than their parents in regards to being able to take care of themselves and their basic needs. Um, Something like that would understandably call into question the independence of that person, that millennial. Um, (laughs) It was an interesting thing how we grew up. Um, We were kids and now we're adults. And it feels like, to some extent, it happened overnight. There was like, you know, you get your degree or you you get out of your parents' house and you think there's a memo, but not a lot of us millennials got the memo that um, we're adults now. If you haven't thought of that, which I'm sure you have, I'm here to tell you, we are adults now. And we've been adults for a while, depending on how old we are. But what does that mean? We're adults by our society standards. But do we feel like adults? Do we feel like what we thought being an adult would feel like? Yeah, we we definitely um, (laughs) we definitely feel it when we're paying those bills. That that's a reminder that we're an adult. Um, If some of us have kids, uh, we look down at our kids and that's a reminder that we're an adult. Um, When you're handling. uh, (laughs) <laughs> when you're sleeping too much or you're getting up and it's taking a little longer <laughs> or you you sigh or you tie your shoes your back starts hurting you're like what the heck you can't drink as much you get tore up you, your, your ankles start to inflame all these different things <laughs> they remind you that you are now an adult and it's just a, it's an interesting thing, um, having the realization. So, millennial guilt. Um, oftentimes, those that experience millennial guilt are men and women, um, or those that live at home still past the age of 22 years of age. 22 years of age. And you may be... Soon. Or, or older, and you may be experiencing millennial guilt. You know, they say by the age of 18, you're an adult. And if you follow the quote unquote plan, the four year college plan, if that's you, you are 21 years old and you are supposed to be a fully functioning adult, at least getting a job and so on and so forth to be able to take care of yourself. We all know that's a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> collectively a lot of us didn't go to college a lot of us 
went to college and it took five, six years. A lot of us are still in college, you know, it's uh, or getting some sort of uh, degree or in some sort of, you know, uh, nursing school or program or something like that. It's, it's all still in progress. And I think that that may have something to do with it, that we're constantly in progress, which isn't a bad thing. So let's take a look at this. Where does this guilt stem from? Let's look at the basic needs. What are the basic needs millennials often have trouble paying for themselves? Do you know someone or yourself? Do you know someone that can't keep their phone on? It's always got a different number. It's always this, always that. There's a reason for that. Sorry about that. Do you have trouble or do you know someone that's having trouble paying their rent? or their mortgage right now. Who do you, who do you, I know y'all know someone out there that's having issues. Are you having trouble making your car payment? Do you have to park your car in your garage to make sure you're, he, because you're scared of parking it on your driveway or street, it'll get repoed. Is that stress bearing down on you? Do you know someone that's going through that situation? And not alone just the car payment, the car insurance. I know you as many drivers as you know and as crazy as they drive where you're at. You know a lot of these folks don't got car insurance. And if they do, they got the most minimum car insurance because they can't afford that shit. Excuse my language. Health insurance. Ooh, man. Health insurance. A lot of us are still on our parents' health insurance. A lot of us took advantage of the 20 to 26 uh, extension that Obamacare gave us to stay on our parents' insurance. And a lot of us, as soon as we got off our parents' insurance, because we had to go for it, you know, we tried to get it through our employer, but even our employers be tripping, trying not to pay those benefits. And then shit, a lot of us don't even got health insurance. We're trying to go vegan. We're trying to go vegetarian, organic, holistic. Not because we don't want to go to the doctor, because we can't afford to go to the doctor. We, it's funny. We all become artisans and nomads and, and uh, medicine people which is good because we can't afford the unfortunate circumstance of being sick or ill or being hurt we look at our parents or even those that looked after us and we compare ourselves to them at these specific ages we do a lot of us aren't married like some of our parents or our guardians were. A lot of us don't have our own place like our parents did at our same ages. A lot of us don't have reliable transportation like our parents did. Now, of course, that's subjective. You know, if your parents grew up in New York and you grew up in New York, chances are you didn't really need to worry about that. But maybe your parents grew up in, uh, you grew up in, the parents grew up in the suburbs and you grew up in the suburbs and now you're stranded because the closest thing is about a 25 to 30 to 40 minute walk. Hmm. Let's see. Sure, a lot of our parents, they received help from their parents under dire circumstances. 
But for the most part, they had to carve out their own paths to success with very little given to them. The question is, were our parents better prepared for life than we are? And maybe another question is, are we better prepared than they were? Hmm. I guess that all depends on the choices and the lifestyle they de decided to live. So another thing is, how much does economics play in the difference in confidence of millennials and how it makes them feel about going out on their own and being okay with the idea that they're going to struggle until they can figure out how to overcome. Those are big things. Those are huge things. If I pull up these articles, I see that the idea that millennials are born between 1981 to 1996. Those are the millennial birth ranges. And you know what? We'll even throw a few of you uh, Gen Xers in there. Born in 1980. But then you got the baby boomers who were born in 1946. 1964 a lot of our parents I mean a few of us got some Gen X parents but uh, for the most part we got baby boomer parents so looking at the data Millennials we are within that range and the baby boomers are within theirs A lot of us have aging baby boomer parents. We want to see our parents. We don't want to see, but we must see that our parents are getting older. They're moving slower, having to go to the doctor more and more and think about all that they've given us and helped us achieve. And we feel guilty that we aren't in a better position to help them out financially or in other ways. At some point, it's incumbent upon us to start taking care of them and helping them wind down and lower their stress. As millennials that rely on them, we are contributing to their stress and the pressure to perform. They have better jobs in some cases than us and make more money than us for now. You know, to some extent, we feel like we aren't doing our part. We feel the pressure, the weight of bearing down on us to make something out of ourselves so we could stop taking and start giving to those that gave us everything. Very true. This, this is where the millennial guilt stems from. Let's see. So that was, we just got to think about it. You know, of course, our parents deny the things we give them, no matter how big or small, because they know that we need them more than they need them. They may accept a few of the small things we give so we don't feel bad or worse. But really, what they want is for us to be who we are and live our best lives for them not to worry beyond what a parent will naturally worry about the child. They want us to be able to live abundantly, just to be clear. So, you know, you're suffering, I'm suffering, you know somebody that's suffering from millennial guilt. What can we do about it? We can seek to value the wisdom and information that our parents give us or our guardians or who is there for us when we need it. As they roll into retirement or get phased out of their jobs, they're going to feel a sense of anxiety, even at that old age, 
<laughs> older age, even after they've lived through so much, they're going to feel a new type of anxiety and feel that there isn't much they can contribute, that their usefulness has been satisfied. Because for a lot of them, their jobs are their life. So what can we do? We can listen. We must listen to them and let them know we appreciate them and their experiences and knowledge. Now, does that mean do everything they say? No, no, it doesn't. What it means is as adults, we are to find the gold in the message and use that. That's that's what I think. That's what I know. We can also help them around the house and be more involved so we can start shifting the physical burden around the house or wherever they're at or whatever capacity they're doing. If we know that same task that would take dad or mom 10 to 20 minutes, you know, years ago, is now taking them 40 minutes to an hour, we need to step in to show them that we're here to help. And that will allow them to feel better about relinquishing some of those responsibilities that only they feel like they can do. Um, I believe we should consistently be trying to learn and build skills that we can use that to start businesses or side hustles to help out financially. Again, it's about easing that burden. So let's take a look at this because we got to look at it from all points of views. Should we feel guilty in the first place? Let's think about that. Should we feel guilty in the first place? What is being, we got to be honest. We have had more opportunities than our parents have had. That is not even a debatable situation. We're better educated than they were at every, at every level we are. Prior to every previous generation, not just our parents. We're better educated. Um, our women are more educated than their women were. Um, there's actually more women in the workforce um, as a result from a woman's standpoint of view. Now, in regards to men, actually, the shift, there's less men in the workforce than there's ever been in, in a history. So we're seeing an interesting shift. Um... So for college educated folks, their earnings have increased if they, um, these millennials more so than their parents did at that time. Um, you know, basically from all these standpoints of views, we, um, we've had more opportunity. So we have to really look at that. And, and kind of be honest with that. To some aspects, we are weaker than our parents. Um, maybe in the aspect of principles. You know, we do feel, in general, like we have, we're, we're morally, maybe a bit more moral than our parents were, depending on the circumstance. But maybe we do lack principles, set principles, and maybe we lack the ability or no we have the ability we lack the motivation to work hard and also on the levels that they were willing to because each generation has their own um adversity and during the times that they grew up you know we look at they were being born in and through the civil rights era. So they saw firsthand how to fight. And every generation fights differently, but for the most part, there's a time we know when to fight. And there's other times when we just passively accept what's happening to us. And as a generation, we have passively accepted what's happening to us. Maybe we can fight more. Maybe those are things we should feel guilty about. 
Now, here's why we shouldn't feel guilty. For most of our adult lives, we've been living in a recession that is not normal. This is a very special and specific sort of situation that's going on. Again, when we, we some say the recession's over, I, I, I don't subscribe to that. And we know for black folks and, and other folks, y'all know we've always been in a recession. So that's, uh, <laughs> we, we, we're, we're living in very interesting times. So they, for the most part, didn't grow up in any sort of huge recession that lasted from the ages of, um, you know, from the ages of, what is it, 2002 to what? I say it's on. It's been ongoing, but fine. You could say um, 2012. You know, that's what our most formative years, our money-making years, us first starting out. It's been in a recession, and that needs to be accounted for. We shouldn't feel guilty for that. Um, the cost of living is way higher, and wages have not caught up to that rising cost. So, you know, where our parents were able to go get a car, get a home, uh, and, and make money, their money was way longer than our money is right now. And that should be accounted for. We shouldn't feel guilty that these people want to charge uh, a, a grand for a one bedroom when back in their day, 700 bucks will get you like a three bedroom or a two bedroom um, in their day. You know, things were a lot more equal in regards to how much you're getting paid and what, how far that dollar goes. We don't have that. Um, we also may have been sheltered too much from the harsh realities that our parents had to go through. You know, we didn't have to walk 15 miles through snow and, and, and gang gangland and uh, old, old, uh, old man Rickens. Uh, shed and yard and have to run from dogs on our way to school. We didn't have to do that. Most of us walked to the school bus that was what, maybe, you know, 600, 700 feet from our uh, homes. Some of us had to walk a little farther, get on the city bus to get onto the school bus or just get on the school bus. A lot of us, you know, that's what was going on. Our parents even drove us to school. You know, the, just the little things like that. Maybe we didn't realize the our whole lives we were told. If you try your very hardest and you do the best you can. That it's all going to work out. And there's some truth to that. But also we, we should have been probably been told. Is that it's not what you know, it's who you know. Now, that's probably not the message you want to send a child, but it's the reality. And maybe we found that out a little too late. Maybe we found out that life wasn't going to be as good as our parents made it seem it was going to be. If we had just followed the plan, stuck to the plan, and did everything we were supposed to do. Life is suffering. A lot of life, a lot of living is suffering, but also a lot of living is thriving as well. You know, we subscribe to the work smarter, not harder. We shouldn't feel guilty for that or, or anything else. Why toil for two days when you can solve the issue in one? doesn't make sense we shouldn't feel guilty for innovating and making things work better we're creative and also we shouldn't feel guilty for not living and dying in a situation that we're not happy in we want to be fulfilled we recognize by looking at you guys and how hard you guys worked that life is short you got to be happy you got to do things that make you happy and that fulfilled and that don't hurt anyone else. You don't have to step on someone else in order for you to make it. 
these are just some of the things that encompass the concept and motivate and are a result of millennial guilt. This is something, like I said, you know, we we all think, but I finally put it out because I think a lot of you guys are going to rock with this. A lot of you guys are going to feel this one because this is real. It's it is the silent pain that we don't talk about, but we all feel. And if you're feeling this hey, feel free to share it to as many people as you want. This real, we, you know, this real talk, real people, we're not going to lie. We're not going to, you're not alone. A lot of us feel the way you do. A lot of us do. You're not alone. But in this, I've highlighted some ways that we can, things you can do right now, even though you're not making as much money as you want to make, or you're not in the position you want to do, the things that I've given you in this on how to overcome this millennial guilt these are things you can enact right now i don't ever want to give you guys a problem and not provide a solution but yeah this one was just in my mind my heart has been in there for years um you know shoot i still suffer from millennial guilt but i've been working hard just like i know you guys are to be a pleasure and in, in, in not a bill to your parents or to your loved ones or those that looked after you. We want to validate them in and so far as validating ourselves that we can handle it, that we can do it. But yeah, this is current events. Uh, this one is millennial guilt. Um, like I said, like, comment, subscribe. Shouldn't have to tell you all that. Um, I'm definitely going to be putting out some more real content like this because this is this is real. There's, there's no way of going. It can't be any other way up. Um, oh, in the description, I'm going to put three articles of differences between uh, multi-generations, baby boomers, and millennials. Just so you guys can have a little something to chew on. But yeah, uh, be great, everyone. And as I always say without a doubt context is everything